uh, exergy uh, can be transferred added to or uh, removed from a system as a result of its interaction with the surroundings uh, and the interactions with the surroundings may be uh, classified as addition or removal of work heat and mass okay. so we will uh, take a look at uh, what each one of this interaction does uh, in terms of exergy change of the system okay so let us first look at uh, work interaction so when a certain amount of uh, work is done by the system let's say an amount of work w is done by the system its exergy decreases by w u okay so we saw in our earlier example or earlier illustration so here the system uh, does a certain amount of work as it uh, undergoes an expansion process so as it does work its exergy decreases because it is doing uh, work by uh, raising the mass okay so as the system does work its exergy decreases by how much ever uh, work it uh, puts out okay so so if a system does an amount of work w its exergy decreases by uh, exactly that same amount and when an amount of work w is done on the system its exergy increases by the same amount w u since exergy is work work transfer to a system uh, or from the system uh, can be easily uh, converted to or can be directly converted to exergy change okay now uh, addition or removal of mass uh, to a system or in a device also causes an exergy change okay so let us say that we have uh, uh, a certain amount of mass with a specific exergy phi then if i add uh, that that much amount of mass to the system let's say m to the system then the exergy of the system increases by an amount equal to m times phi Okay. If that much mass is removed from the system, then the exergy of the system decreases by that much amount. Okay. So, this is also relatively straightforward to calculate or compute. Okay. Now, when it comes to heat interaction and transfer of exergy uh, through a heat interaction, we have to be uh, somewhat more careful because depending upon the uh, temperature of the system with respect to the ambient temperature, whether the temperature of the system is greater than or less than the ambient temperature, the direction of heat flow and exergy flow can be opposite to each other. Okay. And that is what we will take a uh, close look at next. Now, here um, contours of exergy x equal to constant are plotted on a pt uh, coordinate system okay so notice that this line corresponds to temperature t equal to t naught the ambient temperature that is this line here and the horizontal line uh, corresponds to uh, p equal to p naught okay and the origin of course is the uh, ambient state itself p equal to p naught and t equal to t naught so x equal to 0 at the origin and since exergy is positive uh, it increases in the outward direction radially outward direction as shown here it increases in the radially outward direction ok now let us consider uh, systems at initially at four different states a b c and d Okay. Now, if you take uh, a system initially at state A, if we add heat to this system, its temperature increases and uh, since it is initially at a temperature greater than T naught, its temperature increases. So, its exergy also increases and a new state is in the radially outward direction because its temperature uh, increases and its exergy also increases. Similarly, if I add heat to a system which is initially at state B, since its temperature is greater than T naught as a result of addition of initially greater than T naught as a result of addition of heat its temperature is also likely to increase and it also moves uh, radially away from the origin so its exergy increases. Now conversely if I uh, uh, remove heat from this system or if this system supplies heat to some other device then its temperature will decrease and its exergy also decreases so it moves in the radially inward direction and the same is true for this uh, system also which is initially at a temperature greater than T naught. Now if I look at uh, the systems which are initially at uh, states uh, C and D. Now, temperature of system C initially is less than T naught. 
if I add heat to the system, then its temperature uh, increases and as a result, it moves towards the origin like this. So, its exergy actually decreases. If I supply heat to this system, then its exergy actually decreases in contrast to systems which were initially at states A and B. Similarly, since uh, the system at state D is initially at a temperature less than uh, T naught, if I supply heat to the system, its temperature increases and consequently it moves towards the origin. So, its exergy decreases. Now, conversely and uh, quite unintuitively, if I remove heat from this system, its temperature decreases and the state point moves radially outward and as a result, its exergy also increases. Remember, exergy increases in the outward direction as shown here. So, when the state point moves away from the origin, uh, the exergy of that state point is higher. So, the exergy increases in this case when I remove heat from this system. Similarly, for the system which is initially at state D, if I remove heat uh, from the system, its exergy actually uh, increases. Okay. So, you can see that the direction of heat transfer and uh, exergy, uh, exergy transfer or opposite uh, depending upon whether the uh, temperature is uh, greater than T naught or less than T naught. Okay. So, that is something that we should keep in mind. Let us explore this in greater detail and uh, see what happens to these four in these four situations. Okay. So, let us say that initially we have a system which is at a temperature T greater than T naught. Now, let us say that this uh, let us say that initially we have um, uh, we have something which is at a temperature greater than T naught. Um, I do not want to, we can call it a system, yeah, no problem. So, let us say that we initially have a system which is at a temperature greater than T naught. Let us say that this system supplies a certain amount of heat Q to some other uh, device or system. Okay. Now, we want to understand, we, we know that there is a heat transfer, we want to understand what the corresponding exergy transfer is. Okay. To understand this, we envisage a reversible engine or that operates between the system at temperature greater than T naught and the ambient which is at T naught. Okay. So, since this reversible engine is supplied with an amount of heat Q, it produces an amount of work W which is equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. Now, since this is a perfectly reversible engine, there are no internal or external irreversibilities. So, um, uh, we are recovering an amount of exergy X equal to W from this engine. And since there are no external or internal irreversibilities, this means that uh, exergy is not destroyed within this engine. That means that if you are recovering an amount of exergy X equal to W from this engine, it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy X equal to W. Okay? That is what is shown here. Okay? Let us uh, go through this one more time. This engine produces an amount of work equal to W. So, from an exergy perspective, uh, an amount of exergy W is uh, recovered from this engine R. Okay? Amount of uh, exergy X equal to W is recovered from this engine R. Since it is a reversible engine, there are no internal or external irreversibilities. No exergy is destroyed within this engine. Okay? So, if you recover an amount of uh, exergy X from this engine, that means that it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy X in the first place. Okay? So, now if we look at this from the perspective of uh, the this system which was initially at temperature greater than T naught, when such a system supplies an amount of heat Q, it is also equivalently supplying an amount of uh, exergy X equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. So, when a system at temperature greater than uh, the ambient temperature supplies an amount of heat Q, it supplies an amount of exergy X equal to Q times 1 over, I am sorry, Q times 1 minus T naught over T. Now, the same system, if it receives an amount of heat Q, 
then for this situation we can envisage a reversible heat pump that operates between the ambient at temperature T0 and this system which is at a temperature greater than T0. Now, for this uh, um, heat pump to work, we need to supply an amount of work W. Okay, and the amount of for now and the amount of work W may be evaluated like this. So, for this reversible heat pump to reject an amount of heat Q to this uh, to this system, we can evaluate the amount of work that is required uh, to accomplish that. Okay, that is equal to Q times one minus T naught over T. So. We can envisage a reversible heat pump that operates between the ambient and the system which is at temperature uh, greater than T naught and rejects an amount of heat Q to the system while receiving an amount of work W equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. Now, from an exergy perspective, when this engine is supplied with an amount of work equal to W, it is also being supplied with an amount of exergy X equal to W. Since it is a perfectly reversible engine, there is no exergy destruction within the engine. This means that whatever exergy is supplied to the engine must be recovered. The same amount of exergy must be recovered and that is what is indicated here. So, we may summarize this situation as follows. When a system at temperature greater than T naught receives an amount of heat Q, Equivalently, it receives an am amount of exergy X equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. And the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are the same in these cases. Okay? When the uh, temperature of the system that receives or supplies heat is greater than T naught, the ambient temperature. Now, let us um, look at a system which is at temperature T less than T naught. Okay. Now, let us say that this system receives an amount of heat Q. Okay. Now, we envisage a reversible engine R which operates between the ambient which is at T naught and this system which is at a temperature less than T naught. Okay. It rejects an amount of heat Q to this system and produces an amount of work W which is equal to Q times T naught over T minus 1. Okay. Now, uh, from an exergy perspective, okay, since this engine produces a certain amount of work W, that means an amount of exergy X equal to W is recovered from the engine. Since the engine is reversible without any internal or external irreversibilities, there is no exergy destruction. Consequently, if we recover an amount of uh, exergy X equal to W from this engine, it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy X equal to W in the first place. That is what is indicated here. Okay? So, let us summarize this in words. When a system which is at a temperature less than T naught receives an amount of heat Q, it is equivalently supplying an amount of exergy X equal to Q times T naught over T minus 1. Okay? Notice that the direction of heat transfer and the direction of exergy transfer are opposite in this case. Okay? So, direction of heat transfer and direction of exergy transfer are opposite in this case. Next, same system at a temperature less than uh, T naught. Let us say that it supplies an amount of heat Q. Okay? This is for instance what would happen in the case of a refrigerator. So, when the refrigerant enters the refrigerated compartment, heat is picked up from the refrigerated compartment. And remember, the refrigerated compartment is at a temperature less than the ambient temperature. Okay? So, this is for instance what happens in a refrigerator. So, the system at a temperature less than T naught supplies an amount of heat Q. So, I can easily uh, visualize or envision a refrigerator which operates between the ambient T naught and this uh, system which is at a temperature less than T naught while being supplied with an amount of work W which is equal to Q times T naught over T minus 1. 
So, the refrigerator is supplied with an amount of work equal to W and it transfers an amount of heat Q from the uh, reservoir which is at a temperature T naught and rejects an amount of heat Q naught to the ambient. In terms of exergy, since the engine is supplied with an amount of work W, we are also supplying the engine with an amount of <coughs> exergy X equal to W. And since the engine is reversible without any internal or external irreversibilities, there is no exergy destruction, which means that <coughs> whatever exergy is supplied to the engine must be recovered. So, that is what is shown here. Okay. So, an amount of exergy X equal to W is recovered from this engine. Okay. Now, you can see that <coughs> the direction of heat transfer and the direction of exergy transfer or opposite to each other in this case also. So, when a reservoir or system at temperature T less than T naught supplies an amount of heat Q, it is equivalently receiving an amount of exergy X equal to Q times T naught over T minus 1. So, in these two cases, the direction of uh, heat transfer and exergy transfer are opposite. So, when the system is at a temperature less than T naught, the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are opposite. When the system is at a temperature greater than T naught, the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are the same. This is very, very important. That is why we said that it is easy to figure out the uh, amount of exergy transferred and the direction of exergy transfer in the case of work transfer and in the case of mass transfer. Whereas, in the case of heat transfer, the direction of exergy transfer and heat transfer are dependent upon whether the system that is receiving or supplying the heat is at a temperature greater than or less than the ambient temperature. So, this is very important uh, later on. In fact, all these uh, situations are important because we will encounter them when we look at thermodynamic cycles for power producing plants as well as power absorbing uh, devices. And when we do uh, a second law analysis for these devices, this is very, very important being able to figure out whether exergy is transferred to the system or exergy is recovered from the system is very important uh, for doing exergy balance and then uh, evaluating second law efficiency. Now, we will derive an expression for exergy change of a system as a result of both heat and uh, work interactions. Remember, if it is a system, then uh, mass interactions are not allowed because that will change the uh, mass that is contained within the system. So, we will look at exergy change of a system as a result of uh, heat and, and work interactions. Uh, so, let us start with the system. Uh, so, we apply first law uh, to the system. So, delta E equal to Q minus W. So, delta E itself may be written like this and this is uh, equal to Q minus W. Now, the W itself as, um, as was mentioned uh, at the beginning of this lecture may be written as a sum of useful work plus the work that is done to displace the atmosphere which is uh, not uh, available as useful work. Now, we may also write for this system uh, based on the principle of increase of entropy, we may write delta S uh, system plus delta S surroundings equal to sigma and delta S system is nothing but S2 minus S1. So, delta S system is S2 minus S1 and delta S surroundings is nothing but uh, Q surroundings divided by T surroundings. And we know that uh, uh, our, uh, yeah, our Q reservoir divided by T reservoir in case you know the heat is being supplied from a reservoir. So, if it, uh, heat is being exchanged with the surroundings, then we may write as Q surroundings divided by T surroundings. In case heat is being supplied or rejected to a reservoir, then it will become Q reservoir divided by T reservoir. And we know that Q surroundings or Q reservoir is equal to minus Q system. So, that is where this expression comes from. Now, if we uh, multiply the second expression by T naught, which is the ambient temperature and subtract from the first expression, we may actually write it like this. Okay. So, we end up with an expression that looks like this. So, x 2 minus x 1 is the change in exergy of the system and that is due to uh, heat interaction with the reservoir or surroundings and useful work that is done. Of course, uh, there is a reduction or destruction of exergy to the amount of T0 times sigma. Okay. Now, we may interpret the different terms uh, in this expression as follows. So, the left hand side represents exergy change. So, exergy change is due to exergy transfer 
minus exergy destroyed. Okay, so T0 times sigma is the exergy that is destroyed. So, exergy changes, exergy transferred minus exergy destroyed. Exergy transferred itself is made of two uh, terms. One is exergy transferred due to the heat interaction, the other one is the exergy transferred due to work interaction. Okay, so, if a system does as, uh, as I mentioned um, just before this, if a system does a certain amount of work, then the exergy of the system changes by W u which is the useful component of the work interaction. So, if a system does uh, an amount of work W, then its exergy decreases by W u and conversely if a system does uh, or if a system receives an amount of work W, then its exergy increases by W u. So, that is what this term uh, represents. Okay. Notice that in this case W u will have the appropriate sign positive if work is done by the system, negative if work is received by the system or done on the system. Similarly, for Q also. So, there could be transfer of exergy from uh, high temperature reservoir to the system or rejection of heat to the to a reservoir at a lower temperature. Now, depending upon the temperature of the reservoir, the sign of the exergy interaction will change as uh, we discussed in detail. Okay. Now, if I rearrange this expression, uh, then we may write it like this. So, take the W u to the left hand side, we get W u equal to this combination of terms, this combination of terms minus T 0 times sigma. Okay. Notice that if the process uh, is fully reversible, meaning sigma is 0, no external or internal irreversibility, then sigma is 0, W u is then uh, the maximum value that is possible. So, we may identify the term within this curly bracket as W u reversible. Okay. So, to sum up, uh, the exergy change of a system due to heat and work interaction <coughs> looks like this and T0 times sigma is the exergy that is destroyed. So, this is the most general case when the system has both heat as well as work interactions. Now, in the same manner, we can develop an expression for a uh, rate of change of exergy of a control volume also okay, as a result of uh, both heat and work interactions with the surroundings for the reservoir. Okay. So, for an unsteady flow process with multiple inlet and outlet streams, we may write uh, the rate of change of energy, total energy within the control volume as q dot minus w x dot plus m dot times this plus minus m dot times this. So, this represents the outgoing stream, this represents the incoming stream. So, this is the familiar unsteady energy equation. This is the uh, <coughs> rate of change of entropy within the control volume. And as you can see, uh, this uh, represents a uh, rate at which entropy is brought into the control volume. This is the rate at which entropy is uh, leaving from the control volume. This is the rate of change of entropy of the control volume due to the heat interaction with the external reservoir or surroundings. And of course, sigma dot is the rate at which entropy is generated during the process, both internal as well as external. Okay. Now, in the same manner as before, if we multiply the second expression by T naught and subtract from the first one, we may uh, obtain this expression which is nothing but uh, the rate uh, an expression for the rate of change of exergy within the control volume. So, dx C V dt is the rate of change of exergy within the control volume. It is due to ex interactions with the surroundings which is nothing but work interaction and heat interaction plus of course, uh, interaction with there is a wire and then um, uh, we also have rate uh, at which exergy is brought into the control volume, rate at which exergy leaves the control volume and then rate at which exergy is destroyed within the control volume. So, the rate of change of exergy within the control volume is composed of these terms W x dot term Q dot term and then rate at which exergy is brought in and brought out and then rate at which exergy is destroyed. What is that? In combining these two terms, we have made use of the fact that q dot reservoir is equal to minus q dot. Okay. So, we may identify different terms in this expression like this. Uh, dx cv dt is the rate of change of exergy and uh, these two terms, this is the rate at which exergy is supplied to the control volume and this is the rate at which exergy is recovered from the control volume and these two terms combined together. Uh, account for or contribute to change of exergy uh, as a result of in, uh, heat and work interaction with the surroundings.
or reservoir as the case may be. This term represents the rate at which exergy is destroyed. Now, for a steady flow process, the uh, time derivative goes to 0 and we may rearrange this the right hand side of this expression just like what we did for a system. So, by taking the w x dot to the left hand side. So, if you do that, we are left with a nice expression like this and this w x dot reaches a maximum value or attains a maximum value when sigma dot becomes equal to 0. That is a fully reversible process, no internal or external irreversibility. So, you can see that we can then identify the term within the curly bracket as w x dot reversible. Just like we identified w u reversible, we may identify this as w x dot reversible. Okay, so now we can put all these things together. You may recall that we started uh, this module by stating that uh, uh, a different metric is required. One apart from energy based metric is required for uh, properly evaluating the performance of devices which are executing non flow or flow processes. Okay, and we pointed out some shortcomings in the uh, energy based definitions and we also pointed out that isentropic efficiency was very limited in its usefulness or utility. And so, we said that we will introduce a new concept or notion called exergy and we have developed that so far. Okay. Now, we will put it together and then define uh, second law efficiency for different types of devices, work producing device, work absorbing device and other devices. And the nice thing about this uh, definition is that it is equally applicable to flow as well as non-flow process, uh, no separate uh, uh, definition uh, is required for flow or non-flow process. Okay. So, Second law efficiency for a work producing device is defined like this W u which is a useful work we can say actual useful work although that is understood. So, W u actual divided by W u reversible. So, we have a device which produces a certain amount of work it could be let us say piston cylinder mechanism ok as the uh, flow undergoes expansion it produces a certain amount of work. Okay. So, we know we can evaluate the uh, actual amount of work perhaps from integral PDV and the reversible work you may recall is nothing but the change in exergy of the system. Remember exergy of the system decreases because it is uh, producing work. So, change in exergy in this case we want a positive number. So, we write it as x 1 minus x 2. And you may also recall uh, that the actual work is less than the uh, ideal or reversible work by the amount of lost work which is nothing but T0 times sigma. So, W u actual is equal to W u reversible minus T0 times sigma. So, and this was the lost work. So, if we substitute this into this expression, we end up with the uh, following form for uh, the second law efficiency of this particular device. Now, in case it is a, a steady flow device, we will simply understand that w u means uh, w x dot and the, that there is no work done in displacing the atmosphere in this case. Whereas, when we are uh, evaluating w u actual for a non flow device, we need to account for the uh, work done in displacing the atmosphere. This will be demonstrated in the uh, following examples. Okay. Now, in case it is a work absorbing device, we uh, simply uh, move the reversible work up to the numerator. So, this is nothing but uh, w u reversible divided by w u actual and following the same steps as this, we may uh, write this as uh, 1 minus t 0 sigma divided by x 2 minus x 1 plus t 0 sigma. Now, in case of uh, devices which are neither work producing nor work absorbing, a very general form of second law efficiency may be defined like this. It is a 2 equal to exergy recovered divided by exergy supplied. So, we supply a certain amount of exergy to the device and we recover a certain amount of exergy from the device. The difference between the two of course, is the exergy that is destroyed within the device and that may be uh, used to define an efficiency for this device. Okay. In case of a steady flow device, we may write this as sigma across the outlet stream of m dot times psi divided by 
sigma across the inlet streams for m dot times psi. Okay. Of course, um, um, we may also we also understand that exergy recovered is equal to exergy supplied minus exergy destroyed. And that is what we have done here. T0 times sigma dot is the uh, exergy destroyed. So, we may uh, rewrite this expression in this manner. Okay. So, this as you can see um, uh, covers all the possible cases that uh, we wanted to look at. Okay. Flow, non flow, work producing, work absorbing, neither. Okay. So, we can actually calculate the performance metric for any device that we may uh, come up with. Okay. That is the uh, utility of second law efficiency. It is far more general and contains more insights because it takes into account entropy that is generated in the universe as a result of internal and external irreversibilities. Now, let us see how we calculate um, second law efficiency for the examples that we worked out in the previous course. Uh, where we actually did a first law analysis and uh, we determined say for example, um, uh, entropy generated, work, intra work interaction, heat interaction and so on. For the same example, now we will calculate a second law efficiency.